Welcome to an episode of Behind the Scenes, a weekly program unveiling the biggest political developments in Somali politics and the wider Horn of Africa region. I'm Sultan Mohammed, your host and co-producer here on Hot the Media alongside Suleiman Hashi. On this week's program, a Southwest State President, Abdul Aziz Laftagaran, returns from neighboring Somali Galbed in Ethiopia. His opposition in Mugdusha began campaigns to topple him. The appointment of Mukhtar Robo alongside former politicians like Sharif Sheikh Aden and Jawari has created a coalition of figures that are being propelled into the spotlight by Villa Somalia. Now, there have been new agreements reported to have been signed between Laftagaran with the Ethiopian government in Addis Ababa and the Somali Galbed government in Chikjiga. Now, what does this all mean for relations with the federal government and the unity and territorial integrity of Somalia? This is the topic on the program today. We hope you find this program very informative. Please like, share, and for similar content, do subscribe to Hotford Media. Also, do subscribe to Hotford Media Group's second channel where you're currently watching this program known as Hotford TV, where you can find exclusive other programs just the african weekly roundup and mahahi sala among others and last but not least do you follow myself sultan Mohammed, suleiman hashi yasin abdi and the wider for the media team on our social media platforms that should appear on the screen any moment let's get straight into it in a surprise move to many, President Lafta Garen of Southwest State traveled to Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa earlier this month. This came following visits by senior Ethiopian security officials to Bay Double, and it is reported that Lafta Garen received an official invitation at this point. However, behind the scenes cannot verify this independently. It is also reported that upon finding out, Villa Somalia informed President Lafta Garen to wait out the official visit to Ethiopia, but he refused to do so. Now, a similar visit was made by Puntland President Saeed Abdullah Deni to Addis Ababa, where it is also perceived to demonstrate growing tensions between Mogadishu and Gadawe, especially following the appointment of Prime Minister Hamza Abdebara and the announcement of his cabinet in recent weeks. Irrespective, Mogadishu has remained relatively quiet on all these trips, at least publicly. Now, what is clear is that there's a brewing and increasingly intensifying political rift between federal member states, especially between Southwest states, Somalia and Mogadishu. So, what has caused this rift? Now, there are major causes that have resulted in distrust between Mogadishu and Bay Double. Since earlier this year, there has been a coalition of politicians that originate from Southwest State that have been engaging in the preparation of the removal of President Laftagaren, well, at least the idea of it. Some members of this coalition include former Lower House Speaker and Southwest State President Sharif Sheikh Aden, former Lower Speaker Jawari, even current Speaker Adam Madoba has been reported to be on this coalition, and even the Somali Defense Minister Abdul Qadir Mohamed Noor, who has his own issues with Bay Double following elections that took place there. Now, the dispute revolves around two major elements. One, the elections that took place in Southwest State Somalia in which some politicians have claimed to have been denied access to participating in the elections of parliamentary seats. The most vocal of these dissidents is the former parliamentary speaker, Jawari. And number two, the looming Southwest State regional presidential election, which has been disputed by the opposing political camps. Now, president Leftagaren was elected president of the federal member state on the 19th of December 2018. Now, the constitution of the regional state stipulated that a presidential term would last four years with an election to follow. However, the issue was that the presidential term was four years, whereas the parliament and in turn the government's term was five years, which logically cannot work, of course. And this resulted in Southwest State's parliament voting to provide Leftagaren and his administration a one year extension to allow the terms of the government and parliament to coincide. Now, this has been disputed and rejected, of course, by Left Against Opposition, who are adamant for elections to be held by December 2022. This rift between Southwest state politicians has been brewing under the surface for a year prior to the election of President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud in May of this year. For instance, in May 2022, for instance, President Lafta Garen would summon all MPs and senators representing Southwest state Somalia to Bay Double to discuss political events that were unfolding in Mogadishu, including plans to removed from office by this coalition of Southwest state politicians. Speaking to the media, current MP and former commander of the custodial corps, Mahad Abdurrahman Aden said, we know there are meetings being held in Mogadishu and we will defend President Laftagaren. So, since the election of Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, what steps has Villa Somalia taken regarding this brewing conflict in Southwest state Somalia? 
The government in Mogadishu would release the former Al Shabab deputy leader and spokesman Mukhtar Robo, a man that was in direct competition with Laftagaran during the 2018 elections before its detention by the previous administration led by Mohammed Abdullah Farmajo. In fact, Robo would be offered a senior cabinet post in the new position within the new government led by Hamza Abdi Barre, a decision that has sent shockwaves in Baydabo's camp. Now, some analysts have argued that Villa Somalia has the intention of replacing Laftagaran with Robo in the upcoming elections, as we have begun to see Robo embed himself with the opposition coalition aforementioned, giving a speech, for instance, during an event held for him by this group in Mogadishu just last week. Now, statements made by Robo in recent days have also raised eyebrows. One of the such statements is his continual repetition of the fact that he will not be holding this position of religious affairs minister in the cabinet for very long. Some analysts have translated this to be a sign that Robo and Villa Somalia have plans for him to run for office again in Beidabo. Now, Mukhtar originates from Southwest State, having previously hid in the Bakol region, which is close to Eth in the Somali Galbed, alongside his militia of fighters he led following his rift or spats with Al Shabaab at that time. It is reported that the militia is still present in Bakol and has allegiance to Mukhtar. So, to Laftigaran, the empowerment of Robo is a direct threat to himself and his administration. So now the question becomes, why has Hassan Sheikh decided to side with the opposition? Well, for President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, he perceives Laftigaran as a key former ally of President Farmajo. It is reported that Hassan Sheikh wants an individual that he can work with and will not pose a threat or opposition to his government or policies. Indeed, Laftigaran is clearly a politically vocal individual. We can see Hassan Sheikh having already made similar moves for Gilmuduk, with newly appointed Interior Minister Ahmed Fiqi being seen or at least being said to be a replacement for President Ahmed Qorqor. Now, Fiqi is a direct opposition to Qorqor having been fired as Gelmuduk Regional Security Minister following his support for Ahlul Sunnah wa Jamia during battles between Gelmuduk State and the militia. Now, we can similarly see the appointment of Abshir Omar as Foreign Minister. Mr. Omar previously served as the Secretary General of the main opposition party in Puntaland, Midaye. Now, Midaye is defeated in Deni's incumbent political party during the 2021 direct election in Qardo district, among other places. So, it's clear that Hassan Sheikh has a bigger plan for federal member states, which is continuing to cause rifts between them. So, what are the possible consequences in Southwest State as the disputed election date looms in the horizon? It is quite possible for Southwest State to witness events that unfolded in Mogadishu against the former government in Baydabo. The idea of Baydabo Konfurgalbed or Bedbado could have gone for Galbed, sorry, or the Southwest State Salvation Group could be formed. We've seen a similar group formulated in Gelmuduk against Khorkhor by opposition leaders during the 2021 to 2022 presidential elections in Somalia, that is federal Somalia. Additionally, during a recent speech by Mukhtar Robo, he gave credit to the so-called National Salvation Force Militia in Mogadishu or Bedbadu for what he described as restoring peace and government to Somalia. Such statements indicate that Mr. Robo endorses the use of violence to topple a government that he does not agree with. Now, with a militia president in Bakol, it is quite possible that a new militia could be formulated by Robo with all these different leaders against Laftagaran in Baydabo, and this could lead to violence. And this, of course, explains recent decisions by Baydabo that flights traveling to the state of Southwest State from Mogadishu would have to provide a list of passengers before traveling, a decision which demonstrates the complete lack of distrust, or sorry, the complete lack of trust between Southwest State and Mogadishu. Now, Back to the giant elephant in the room, what about the role of Ethiopia? Now, as previously discussed here on Behind the Scenes in previous episodes, the tensions between Mogadishu and Addis Ababa have grown as a result of a wider foreign policy decision by Somalia. An agreement signed between the Ethiopian and Somali governments in Mogadishu in 2018 emphasized the importance of respect between both nations and respect for national sovereignty and integrity. It seems as though the decision by Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud to jointly condemn what President al Sisi of Egypt described as unilateral decisions on the Nile River by Ethiopia has been considered a clearly a matter of internal Ethiopian affairs and as a result it seems Ethiopia has perceived such a policy by Hassan Sheikh as a violation of the agreement signed by former President Hamad Abdullah Farmajo and current Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and consequently Ethiopia now sees Somalia as a threat more likely a tool for Egypt to influence an attack Ethiopia because you have to remember Somalia has the longest border, land border with Ethiopia. 
Now, Ethiopia has already turned to her old ways, as Addis Ababa previously invited both Denny and Laftegeren, presidents of Puntland and Konfurgalbed or Southwest states, shall I say, behind closed doors without consultation with Mogadishu. For Laftegeren, the recent Al Shabaab threat coupled with threats from Mogadishu means that he would rather deal with Ethiopia. Now, of course, I personally do not agree with such a decision because it makes him no better than any other Somali leader like Ahmed Madoba of Jubaland, who has been dealing with Nairobi and Kenyatta for a long time. However, Laftegeren signed agreements with Jigjiga, according to both regional governments, during a press statement while he was in Somali Kalbet. Now, these agreements were and are internationally legal because they come under the wider Ethiopian Somali Security Pact that was signed in 2018. Now, I personally endorse and support any joint cooperation between Somalis to provide peace in the Somali lands, for instance, between Somali Galbed and regional states of regional neighboring states of Southwest State or Hirshabele. Working together here to resolve the Al Shabaab threat and the tensions is a positive thing. But we cannot support Laftegren seeking support beyond Somalis and entering territories like that could destroy sorry, his political career. Uh, him traveling to um, Ethiopia or traveling to Kenya or any other foreign country could be a detrimental to his political career. Now, as for Hassan Sheikh, it is best that he stops the support of the opposition so aggressively as he's been doing right now. He's adding more fuel, he's adding more wood to a fire that's already heavily lit. He's creating more instability in Southwest state. And that's the last thing a president of a country should be doing. What he should be doing is trying to find a solution to the issue, trying to find peace and trying to find prosperity in not just Southwest state, not just in Mogadishu, but the, all, the whole of Somalia. Rather, he must now take the steps to rectify relations with Bain Double, and not just Bain Double, but also Chik Chiga, because Chik Chiga has been at the forefront of the Battle of Al Shabab. Now, a visit to Addis Ababa is also needed from Hassan Sheikh to showcase neutrality, because if he's already visited Egypt, if he's already discussed things with Al Sisi, the only way to diffuse tensions, it might not fix it, but it can diffuse it by simply traveling to Addis Ababa and meeting the officials there and telling them that Somalia remains neutral and whatever Somalia, whatever role Somalia can take to help resolve the issue, Somalia will take.